Well, boys, the last Culture Couch live for 2020. So, uh, well done. We, we sort of started, what, 14, 15 weeks ago. So, yep. sort of flown by. So, we just thought we'd wrap up for everyone that's listening. We'd just wrap up the year 2020. So, I thought it'd be just reflecting today, guys. Just either something that's come up regularly in our workshops or for you specifically, or maybe a, a, an itch you want to scratch around 2020. Mm-hmm. So, we'll, we'll just go around and chat about uh, probably the main takeaway for 2020. So, Em, I might just throw to you first and, and let you jump in. Yep, yep. I th- think it comes up for me when you ask that question is around the input, because of the virtual meetings, uh, the importance of the structure of your meetings and making them impactful. Uh, meetings shouldn't be left for just ticking off boxes and tasks. They should be a space to build trust and connect and problem solve together. And those two things, the more we do it, the, when we're outside of those meetings, the more it becomes natural, the more consistently and, and quick and speed as well. But with the virtual space, camera off, leader gets in, barks orders, 50% of the people don't say anything, 20% say a little bit, but then the top 20, 30 say everything. <laughs> Very important to make sure that we start our meetings connecting and then go into problem solving and don't get stuck in the trap of just knocking down tasks, directive telling, because it's a time to connect. And there's so much opportunity now in the virtual world to disconnect and also missed opportunities, missing out on your introverts and them speaking up in those meetings who are often very insightful and opportunities to miss. So the structure of your virtual meetings, cameras have to be on, Start the meeting with a check-in. Everyone has to contribute. Fall into asking questions as much as you can as a leader. Build the trust, build the connection, problem solve together. Otherwise, it's a very big trap of actual creating greater disconnection. And that's a huge threat. We've talked about it a lot throughout the year and it's been very prevalent in all the, the teams I've worked with this year for sure. Yeah, 100%, isn't it? I guess, Murphy, you and I, how many... How many groups have said they're busy? They're busy in meetings. And then we talk about what their meetings have actually been. Yeah. And they're just not, they're not productive at all. They're just, they're just busy doing nothing, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, we, we can so easily get caught being busy. And I think that that's one of the key things, which I think, this, is, this isn't my key thing, by the way, Rizzy. You know that. <laughs> I, I, know, I, know, I know that. It's key thing. I'm going to get. I'm but I think, get I think that if, as a leader, and this will come to my thing in a moment when you actually ask me, but um, as as a leader, I think we we have to make sure we're leading and we're not just doing the work and and taking the time out for for building those relationships is what sort of a meal saying, I think. Yeah. All right, so have a crack at it now then, Murph. What, <laughs> what? All what right. is, uh, well, what, I know, well, as you, you know, I've worked well, a lot this year, which has been great, hasn't it? I know. I sort of, it's been really interesting because I sort of sense when you do get a little bit um, up agitated. around certain things. So, so now's your chance to vent, I reckon. Now, now, you, <laughs> no, now, you, got the, now you got the floor. I'm a calm, I'm a calm man. We all know that. And so, calm and positive. Calm, calm and positive. I, I, for me, it's around, <clears throat> there's two things, I think, uh, as I can never sink, keep it to one. Role model leadership, I think, it's yeah. just reinforced, like, right across the year. And I, it's as simple as Zoom. Like, you, you, you get into the meeting, if the leader puts their camera on and yeah. everyone goes, whoa, okay, that's what we do. We put our camera on. And yeah. so we, we talk. So never, ever, ever underestimate your role as a leader in modelling the right behaviours because yeah. it, it doesn't matter how smart you are, you cannot bullshit your behaviour. People, yeah. people see you, people watch you. They, If they're not telling you, they're talking about you behind your back. So make sure you understand who you are, what you stand for, what behaviour you want from your team, and then absolutely model it. Like that, That's my first point, Rizzy. So yeah. it, it almost sent a little bit of a rant, didn't it? That, that just, <laughs> The second point I think around COVID is inclusion. I, I, yeah. I think that um, making sure that everyone is included and has yeah. a voice 
and feel safe. Like I think COVID has been, it's forced us to sort of, um, I get, I guess, explore that inclusion a bit more because of Zoom, because of Teams, and and I think if we can take that forward, um, where we are really conscious about creating inclusive environments and including everybody and making sure everyone's got a voice, um, then I think I think the world will be a better place. So it's all a bit tied up in terms of um, building good relationships, but but I think creating the time and space to make sure everyone's included is really important. So role model yeah. leadership and inclusion for me. And, and that, that's yeah. the point. That's the reason why I'm so big on these check-ins and running meetings where people, their voice, like it's it's demanded. Like it's not okay to rock up and just not put your your two cents in because in the team environment, we need everyone because everyone, there's things we can't see. That, and those great questions by Amy Edmondson for leaders. Is there anything that I'm not seeing here, team? Is there anything that you see that I don't see? Those types of questions, because they are. People, as you make a good point, people are having the conversations. They just might not be having them at the right place. Like they're going home and talking to their significant other or whatever it might be. And this this Carl Jung quote just keeps coming up for me. It says, loneliness does not come from having no people about one, but from being unable to communicate the things that seem important to oneself or from holding certain views which others find admissible. And so you're rocking up to a meeting and you have no place to share what's on your mind. And you do that four, five, six times in a row. It's a pretty slippery slope for the people inside of your culture and the the relationships can be be pretty broken um, quite quickly, right? Yeah, and I think, I think, Murph, to your point, I mean, the leader gives permission either way, doesn't it? The leader gives permission for whatever that behaviour is, either positive or negative. And, you know, whether it's a meeting, I mean, how many times have we done a workshop or, or maybe gone to a coffee or met someone and we walk out and we go, we're not going to work with that group. He yeah. doesn't yeah. want to be held. He does not want, that leader does not want to be held accountable. Yeah. He wants everyone else to act a certain way, yeah. but he doesn't want to act a certain way himself. Yeah. So he can like, fix the team. A role model leader. Yeah, and it happens all the time. Yeah, the number of times we've done workshops and the leader gets up and, and talks to talk. Oh, well, it's great to have performance by design in. They've done a fantastic job today. But we know we're never going to hear from them again because he can't hold himself accountable. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. So great point. Um, was for you... Um, what what sort of kept on coming up for you? I think you guys have nailed it. I think even just if I just reflect on, and this is a shout out, probably to when Jared brought up, like doing the Culture Couch episodes with key people in and talking about their leadership experience, that was great to do that, you know, all the videos on Culture Couch um, and present them online. But then Jared sort of came up with the idea that we would meet weekly and record ourselves uh, having these sessions talking about stuff that was topical. I think just even us doing that as a for, foursome in PBD has been unreal because yeah. we were all giving each other guidance and support. And actually what I've also found is irrespective of us uh, being together a lot, we all think very similarly um, mm. and not having, without having a whole lot of time together. So it's brought us closer together. It gets us talking about topical stuff. And I think it really cemented the framework. So that first one is just, it comes back to what Emil said before, is inclusion builds relationships. And if you don't do that inclusion piece at the start and get that, the Jared orientated green energy, sorry, I was just going to pay some humour there, um, to talk out loud, um, you um. might Calm. Calm, yeah, <laughs> harmonious. Um, yeah, so that that person talking, they don't feel included, and their and their voice um, doesn't carry through. But people aren't learning a lot about them, so the relationship is not built. And also, if you're not doing it uh, and getting those people talking and, and having those conversations where it is building relationships, it actually undermines the most important factor for me this year, and that's real talk. Yeah. Um, because in this environment where we can't meet a lot, we have to get to the root of what we need to resolve quickly, and that requires real talk to be prominent throughout the business consistently. Um, but it's also requiring us to have you know that four to one ratio, being able to give lots of positive reinforcement and feedback consistently. So when you give real talk, 
you can do so from a foundation of care because you want to improve, but no one's getting bent out of shape because of the, the feedback might be constructive but direct. Um, and so that relationship piece underpins everything. So I think that for me um, is the most important thing. But the last one, just to cover Jared's point, uh, is leading for me this year. I've really transformed myself leading and being a role model because it is the most important thing, forgetting that busyness, because if you're leading and go, and doing those things, busyness, busyness is not an excuse because the rest of the organisation will pick up in the areas to which you feel you're busy at. Um, taking or sucking up too much of the actual activities yourself to do them means that you're not having time to lead and getting other people to do the work, and that undermines the business. So I've really transformed myself to lead this year um, one of my staff members said yesterday just to cover this off and he was here because we've got our Christmas party this weekend uh, and he said, I'm, I don't see what your day looks like, but I was shocked to see how much of it is involved in people and performance and that was actually just leading. He said he couldn't believe it. He goes, doesn't that, doesn't that zap your energy? And I said, no, I really enjoy leading because I know that I can feel the energy of the people that I'm leading and the, and the feedback they're getting consistently uh, in dialogue and, and that's really creating a great great culture so that outcome of um, leading has really made me a better leader yes yeah it's a great point I mean <clears throat> you just can't get away from you are a role model good or bad aren't you I mean the reality yeah. of the leader it's it's not a choice <laughs> you're the yeah. leader good or bad so my suggestion to everyone that wants to be a leader be a good leader <laughs> it's way better, than, <laughs> way, being, way better than being a bad leader what about um, you Rizzy yeah what's your thing yeah, that's yeah, for me, Murph, and you and I have worked a lot um, you know, in the last three months, it's probably a really simple concept around team. That's probably the thing that, that has hit me a bit, that coming from a sporting background and spending so much time you know, with the mids, forwards and backs and getting them together and getting your assistant coaches together and formulating a plan as a group, probably the thing that surprised me is how little time people spend with each other and they think by just creating exec team, yeah. by the very nature of calling them a team, they become close and they're a team. But we yeah. know that's not the case, you know. So I think that's the thing that's really hit me this year, that if my my advice and in the workshops, but today is, is work on it. Work on all the things the boys have said. Build really strong relationships. Help each other, you know. And I think, was what you said before is absolutely right. This has really helped us as a team. I know yeah. Warren's strength. I know Emil's strength. I know Jared's strength. I know my strength. And I think through the conversation we've been having, even through the Culture Couch Live, we've started to get to know each other better, but we're now a much better team. You can't, yeah. I say this all the time, you can't, you can't put a name on a building, desks in a building, walls up, et cetera, et cetera, and, and throw people in together and think they're a team. It just doesn't, yeah. it just doesn't work like that, you know. So I guess that's probably been my biggest takeaway this year, that you have to work on it and work on a, a meal by doing the little often conversation, yeah. be really constructive, work on it, Jez, by you know, being a role model leader and having real talk was, you know, so that, that's the way you, you build a really good team. And yeah, that's probably my reflection for, the, for this year. Well wrapped up, Rudy. That was beautiful. That, that last couple of sentences that was great. Um, now, I, I haven't mentioned this, boys, but uh, about... 12 months ago I went to Ireland um, to spend some time with a Gaelic football team called yep. or County Mayo. Mm. Yep, yep. Mayo haven't won in 53 they haven't won in 53 years. What the championship? But the next week <laughs> yeah, yeah the right. championship. Next weekend <laughs> they're in the fight they're in the final against Dublin. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Uh, and so we we are all going to be tuned to something. I don't even know if we can watch it, to be honest. <laughs> but but I want to wish I want to wish James Horan, who's the coach. Reason I spent a bit of time with him this week. Good luck, Aidan O'Shea, the captain, and a boy called Joe Doyle. Joe Doyle, sort of like the heart and soul of the team. When when I'd finished my weekend uh, working or a few days working with my team, Joe, he said. I don't have to do a very good Irish accent. He said, Murphy, <laughs> come, and, come and I'll show you I'll show you the real island. So Joe took me around uh, this beautiful little seaside town and 
poured, poured a lot of Guinness into me that night. But good luck, good luck to the Mayo boys, yeah. to James, to Aiden, and to Joe. And we'll have a pint of Guinness on uh, Sunday week if they can pull it off. Yeah, here, here. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a big time in Mayo. I had a good chat to James the other day. I'm going to tell you, I went to the Isle Island final, watched Tide Canelli. It's one of the great sporting events I've actually ever been to. Yeah. Still all amateur athletes, none, none yeah. of them get paid. Uh, they put an enormous time, enormous effort, you know. Um, so good luck to them. We, we hope they break the drought. So, boys, well done. Thanks for, thanks for being fantastic, as we've all yeah. touched on. You know, great having these conversations. But to everyone that's listening, we really appreciate it. Everyone's coming up to have a well-deserved break this year. Yeah. Um, so everyone have a fantastic Christmas. Everyone certainly deserves it. I mean, it's been a really tough year. So you know, spend time with your loved ones. Spend time with your family. If you can, get away. Get a really good break. Uh, have a great Christmas and a great New Year. And thanks, guys, for everything this year. Great work, Rosie. Yeah. Thanks, James. Well, was... All right, thanks, guys. Bring on 2021. Absolutely. Good on you guys. Merry See you. Christmas. See you.